Welcome back, young scholars. In this video, we will be discussing the Haitian Revolution. The big question you should be able to answer after watching this video is what were the causes and effects of the Haitian Revolution? So in the 18th century, Haiti was not known as Haiti. It was a colony known as Saint-Domingue. It was a colony of the French located on this half of the island along with the Dominican Republic. As was the case with a lot of other European colonies in the Caribbean, Haiti was a money maker for the French. The French were extracting a lot of wealth out of Haiti in the form of both sugar and coffee plantations. It's a very profitable colony and for the French who were following still a mercantilist philosophy, uh, the, Haiti was resulting in 40% of the world's sugar production and 50% of the world's coffee. And so it's a very valuable colony, one that the French were very reluctant to want to give up. In terms of the composition of Haitian society, uh, it was divided into four major classes. First, you had your white planters known as Grand Blancs. So these are the rich whites who represent about 4% of the population. Below them, you have uh, free people of color or gens de couleur libre. The free people of color represent about 5% of the population. And many of these free people of color were actually children of the Grand Blancs, the rich whites who had uh, children oftentimes with slaves. Below them, you have the Petite Blancs. These are poor whites who represent about 4% of the population. And then the vast majority of people within Haitian society, 87% approximately, were slaves from Africa. Now, it's important to recognize Africa was not a monolithic place, right? These slaves were being taken from Central Africa and the Congo and West Africa and the Gold Coast. And so they spoke different languages. They practiced different religions. And so this is not a recipe for long-term success. Ultimately, this is going to be a society that's very destabilized. When you have whites who are outnumbered by black African slaves by 10 to 1, the question arises, how were whites then able to maintain control of such a vast slave population? And so one of the, the things that we've talked about, the slave experience is going to vary uh, by time and, and region throughout world history. But in Haiti, the slave experience was particularly brutal. Remember, they're growing um, sugar and the conditions are very difficult. So one way that white planters maintain control of their slaves is through the imposition of rules. They are forced into very harsh punishments as a way of deterring um, you know, behavior and violation of these rules. So slaves in, in Haiti were really exposed to what are essentially terrorist tactics. I mean, the elicitation of fear in order to compel them not to act out. Now, does this mean that slaves didn't act out? No, in fact, slaves in Haiti and in other parts of the world develop a number of resistance strategies. You can kind of put these on a spectrum from the most aggressive to the least aggressive. So maybe the least aggressive may have been just intentionally slowing down, not being as productive as they could be intentionally breaking tools and as we move towards a further aggression we could see slaves be running away which they did in haiti and join what are known as maroon societies and of camps or groups of slaves so an important term in ap world history maroon societies these groups of runaway slaves in 1789 news of the french revolution is going to spread to the island of saint domingue and this is going to be dangerous stuff, right? A society that is based upon inequality and what you're introducing as a result of the French Revolution are these enlightenment ideals of equality and liberty. And that is going to fly directly in the face of slavery. Ideas like men are born and remain free and equal in rights as written in the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. And so the slaves, the poor whites, and even the free people of color are going to come to view the French Revolution and documents like the Declaration of the Rights of Man as guaranteeing greater equality for them. The rich white planting class also actually saw the French Revolution as maybe providing them an opportunity because the idea would be the French were going to be occupied and for colonial subjects oftentimes they don't want a lot of oversight uh, by their their distant mother country and so these white planners maybe saw this as an opportunity the french revolution to gain some independence from france in 1791 a bloody slave revolt breaks out in saint-domingue and i mean bloody 
And the reason why this revolt was so bloody was because it really served as payback by exerting the violence and asserting control over their slave owners. You know, they were really trying to, in a way, empower themselves in the same way that the slave owners had empowered themselves uh, through violence and, and brutal tactics of fear. This, though, is just a slave rebellion. And as we've seen in world history, slave rebellions are never successful. But this slave rebellion had one sort of critical difference, and that was the emergence of a leader. Toussaint Louverture was an educated free black who becomes the leader of the slave army in Haiti. He is born a slave. He is very brilliant and is able to become a free person of color, eventually becoming incredibly well-educated. And that's going to be a critical difference between maybe the success of this slave rebellion and other slave rebellions in the past is that ability to really organize the slaves and understanding the sort of political and military tactics that will be necessary to stage a successful slave rebellion. So he gradually is going to establish control over the island using brilliant array of military and political tactics, and he's going to lead this revolutionary army, and that's why many people compare him to George Washington. In 1794, we're in the middle of the radical phase of the French Revolution, and the French are going to free all of their slaves in the colonies as part of this sort of movement at achieving greater liberty and, and greater equality. But as you recall, France doesn't remain in that radical posture for too long. Eventually, they sort of come back to a more moderate position with the emergence of Napoleon as a leader in France. So Toussaint Levateur believes that in order for this slave rebellion ultimately to succeed and for them to gain independence from the French, they needed to build up their economic capacity again. As part of the slave revolt, they had to destroy a lot of the plantations. And so what Toussaint Levateur was calling for was for these former slaves to return to the sugar fields and to recreate this sugar trade that was so valuable to the French. This obviously was not a very popular idea, but we're going to see this sort of theme played out more and more with this idea that the abolition of slavery was a dramatic, important turning point in world history. But at the same time, in terms of the day-to-day -day lives of the people who were emancipated from slavery, their lives didn't change all that significantly. I mean, they still faced incredible economic hardship. And therefore, many of them, in many cases, returned to a lot of the same labor that they were having to do prior to the abolition of slavery. And we're going to see this in North America, too. Ultimately, a lot of those slaves in the South are forced back onto the plantations that they worked before as like low-wage sharecroppers. Toussaint's idea of reinstating the sugar trade, though ultimately wasn't very popular, the people wanted to instead engage in basic subsistence level farming. So Toussaint is going to write a constitution for Haiti and is going to include a number of important uh, things. One, he is going to call for the abolition of slavery. So the, the constitution will abolish slavery. It also will establish that it was unlawful to discriminate on the basis of race. And this is a provision that doesn't even make its way into really the U.S. legal system until really the 1950s and the 1960s. The other part of Toussaint's constitution was that he installed himself as essentially a military dictator for life. And this is one of the areas where he's going to diverge from George Washington. And maybe this explains some of the longer term political success in the United United States versus in places like Haiti and Latin America, where these military rulers are going to take power and then be very reluctant to relinquish that power, versus the United States with the peaceful transfer of power as a result of the precedent that George Washington set. Toussaint, in 1802, he is arrested by the French. He is imprisoned in France. In 1802, the slaves then are going to rebel again. And the reason for this is that the French are coming back and they're coming to reestablish slavery on the island of, of Saint-Domingue. And once you've tasted freedom, though, you never want to go back to slavery. And so the slaves will take up the swords again and, and 
opposition, this time led by a new leader named Jean-Jacques Dessalines. And it's going to be, again, a very brutal, violent battle in order to try and get the French to leave Saint-Domingue. And they do, ultimately, in 1803. The French reluctantly are forced to abandon their plantations in Haiti, mainly because of Jean-Jacques Dessalines' policy, which was essentially scorched earth. I mean, they were going to burn Haiti down and did essentially burn Haiti down in order to get the French to leave. But in 1803, after the French had left, the Haitians formed the first black republic in the world. In terms of the effects of the Haitian Revolution, a couple things to note here. First, the Haitian Revolution was the only successful slave revolt in world history. Many slaves throughout world history tried, uh, but the Haitian Revolution really was the only slave revolt that led to the widespread end of the institution of slavery. In terms of other effects, though, the destruction of the revolution, the fact that they engaged in a scorch earth policy, caused Haiti really to return to an economy of small scale subsistence level farming, which ultimately left the island fairly impoverished. They have also are just very geographically unlucky. So Haiti is in a spot where there have been in the past decade both earthquakes and also major hurricanes, and this certainly has not helped Haiti in terms of improving their economy. The other major effect of the Haitian Revolution actually has to do with this region right here, Louisiana, which was also a French colony at the time. And once France had lost Haiti, which was really its prized colonial possession, it no longer had a significant interest in its American colonies. And so as the United States was starting to expand, Thomas Jefferson, the president, wanted to get access to a port city so that he could be on the Gulf of Mexico. And so he offered to purchase the city of New Orleans uh, from the French for around $10 million. And Napoleon, who was the leader of France at the time, offered instead for the United States to buy all of Louisiana for $15 million. What the heck would you do in a situation like that? Well, I probably wouldn't sell all of Louisiana for $15 million. Napoleon sold Louisiana to the United States in 1803, and that is really a direct effect of the slave uprising that ultimately became the Haitian Revolution because it's the French's increasing disinterest in its American colonies caused by the Haitian Revolution that led them to uh, want to sell this particular portion of their colonies to the United States. So the big question you should be able to answer after watching this video is what were the causes and effects of the Haitian Revolution? Thanks for watching. The French were extracting a lot of wealth out of Haiti in the form of both sugar and coffee plantations. It's a very profitable colony. And for the French who were following still a mercantilist philosophy, uh, the, Haiti was resulting in 40% of the world's sugar production and 50% of the world's coffee. Welcome back, young scholars. In this video, we will be discussing the Haitian Revolution. The big question you should be able to answer after watching this video is what were the causes and effects of the Haitian Revolution? So, in the 18th century, And so it's a very valuable colony, one that the French were very reluctant to want to give up. In terms of the composition of Haitian society, uh, it was divided into four major classes. First, you had your white planters known as Grand Blancs. So these are the rich whites who represent Haiti was not known as Haiti. It was a colony known as Saint-Domingue. It was a colony of the French located on this half of uh, the island along with the Dominican Republic. As was the case with a lot of other European colonies in the Caribbean, Haiti was a moneymaker for the French. 